What is up you guys? It is your boy King Tundra here, aka the real Tundra. Listen, thank you all for 500 subscribers. Clearly, I never thought I would ever hit 500 subscribers, but we did. Now, I also want to give thanks to all you guys for supporting my last video and all you guys that was leaving comments and all that. I want to say thank you guys so much for the love and support that you guys have been giving the videos and the channel. Now, without further ado, let's get into these five things that Undead Labs can do to fix Daybreak. Also, if you enjoy the video, leave a like, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button. Also, leave a comment down below if you guys do think my ideas would be good for Daybreak or even in State of Decay 3. All right, you guys, now on to the video. So let's talk about the five best ways or tips Undead Labs can use to bring some great changes with Daybreak. Because like I said, let's face it, they need some good changes. Starting with number five new maps so how cool would it be to be able to play on new maps and you guys may be wondering tundra how would they do this how would the maps be like what is your idea well take for instance we do play on different maps you know you can play from any map you want to on this game but let's say for instance we want to play on trumbull valley well, they can make it to where Trumbull Valley or Cascade Hills, Drucker, they can make it to where we can play on one of these maps. And in fact, you guys may be wondering, well, how would that work? How would they do this and whatever? Well, that's going to bring me to tip number four, base locations. Yes we would be able to play on a brand new map if they decide to use this like imagine playing on trumbull valley and as i just said how would this work how would they do this well they can give us base locations or survival locations and the way to do this would simply be to let us pick out a base on the map that we can use to survive in now when i say this this is something that left 4 dead has done well with their survival um call of duty allows you to pick out maps even world war z allows you to pick out maps but how cool would it be if you was able to pick the base location you want if this was implemented into the game just think about this though you go to trumbull valley and the base that you want to survive in is the farm tell me that wouldn't be a cool idea like the farm literally has what four exits and then you know they can get over the wall tell me that wouldn't be a cool idea to be able to play within your favorite base location with your friends or a random group of survivors just having fun surviving in trumbull valley's farm area tell me i'm not <laughs> joking when i say that sounds like a really really cool idea that um undead lab should definitely try now this brings me to a way to also make daybreak fun that undead labs can use for state of decay 2 if they want to update daybreak or even use these ideas for state of decay 3 so number three a in-game buy system now listen to me when I say this because this is something that's crazy. Left 4 Dead has a survival mode where basically everything is given to you. All the weapons, all the you know sidearms, bombs, whatever. It's all available to you. Call of Duty has it to where you have the mystery box and wall buys. World War Z has it to where you have I think it's a locker or something i forgot i haven't played world war z in like forever but they have it to where call of duty and world war z have it to where you can actually purchase these weapons in order to survive now what state of decay does is that they give you drops and i mean it can be a little bit better but i understand that the weapons you're using is 
red talon weapons that's perfectly fine but i also think that what they can do is simply have an in-game buy system if they were to use the first two tips that i said why not have it to where you can be able to purchase these guns and bombs and things and it would be kind of cool to do because it'll be something so refreshing and new like you can earn points throughout your throughout your rounds kind of like how call of duty world war z has it where you earn points and now you can go within this locker or whatever they want want to have it the storage and now you can go purchase one of these guns and bombs and stuff and it doesn't have to just be red talon um weapons it can be like high caliber rounds weapons it can be shotguns it can be all of these things but they don't have to do like world war z or call of duty they don't have to make every weapon available if they want to they can i think that'd be fine but it may be a little bit hard so i think they should do it in tiers um with these weapons now again now how cool would that be you're playing on trumba valley the base location that you guys decided decided to vote for was the farm and now you go into the barn and you go into the storage area to purchase your weapons before the round starts guys again tell me if i'm wrong but i think that sounds like a fire idea and that brings me to number two character selection slash skills now hear me out yes we are playing as mercenaries aka red talon but trust me on this one this one's also gonna sound good let me know down in the comments if you agree with this one okay now imagine before the game starts okay you get to select your character now i'm about to tell you exactly how this would work so while you are selecting your character you know you want to be a male or a female member of red talon you will now have the option to select what type of character you want like skill base now this is something i think world war z has done great with theirs like you obviously can't select um your characters when it comes to call of duty black ops one two three i think you're able to do it with four i don't know four was trash so i don't necessarily know but world war z had it to where you would pick a character and you can also pick how you want that character to be like for instance if undead labs was to do this how cool would it be if you can select something let's say one of the skill were building slash construction you would be able to use that skill to help you guys survive further on into the game such as if the fences was being broke down by the horde now you would be able to use your construction character to now repair those things and what i mean by this this is, this can also be done like in a tier let's say like when you first start off with that character in that build or skill it can start off where you are able to repair a wall or fence 25 percent faster just to start off and then in tier two you are able to do it 50 like 50 percent faster and tier three you now have it to where you can place down like i don't know you could probably place down like a wall or a fence or you can now build it to where the walls not only repairs 50 50 times faster but now you have it to where on tier three it is a hundred times faster and more durable to help you guys survive and the same thing can be done like another skill can be a healer you know that first tier now you're able to heal 25 percent faster and then 50 percent faster on the second tier and then the third tier you are now able to unlock blood plague healing and then another skill can be let's say um 
weapons expert shoot 50 percent fast uh faster with reloads um the other tier 50 percent faster uh reloads and now with the third tier you unlock all ammo and you are able to unlock all guns that would be in the storage because if they do the storage correctly it can be done in tiers so like say you start off with trash weapons just to start off with but if you have someone who is a weapons expert and he unlocks tier three now all high-end caliber rifles are unlocked the best shotguns are unlocked the best you know weapons are you guys get the picture so i think that that could be a really cool idea that undead labs can do with their character is character and skill selection now before we get into this final tip let me just add this one thing in here that definitely needs to happen because i think we can all agree doing seven rounds over and over again just to get daybreak influence kind of sucks okay so let's talk about an honorable mention right here so with this honorable mention let's talk about high rounds now what i mean by high rounds is that we continue to go somewhat like world war z again um also call of duty because call of duty has high rounds um left for dead they just have a, a system to see how long you can survive this one wave of zombies constantly coming at you the special infected common uh constantly coming at you and these are high rounds whereas in left for dead it's one big round but you get the point with world war z and call of duty black ops zombies well, in State of Decay, we have a set round, which is seven rounds. And I think if you were to put high rounds in, it would bring in more people and more people would want to play. Like the seven rounds is cool, but it's not fun to keep you playing. It just forces you to play so you can get these daybreak influence. But if you add in high rounds, people will want to play longer and survive longer and things of that nature and let's talk about this other honorable mention other than high rounds that i think will really keep people interested in playing now leaderboards leaderboards would be a really really good way to keep people engaged because many people when they play these things they want to see who is the top player of these things and if you did this correctly it can literally be i'm sorry it can literally be an amazing thing to do for instance let's say we have a leaderboard where somebody has the most kills okay the most special infected kills who is the best healer who is the best construction who is the best um weapons expert you know stuff like that people would love to be able to see their names on the leaderboard so i think the leaderboard thing would be a great thing to add even if you guys don't want to add all of these things to daybreak right now i feel like a leaderboard would be an amazing thing to see like who has the most kills and who killed the most um freaks and who used the most explosives guys these things can be put into the game even who has the most daybreak influence guys to, if i'm wrong let me know down in the comments if the leaderboard thing would be trash or good now let's move on to the number one thing we need to see a difference in so number one more daybreak influence guys let's face it we all want to be able to recruit red talon members and red talon members literally cost over 2000 daybreak influence and you're only getting like 1200 something daybreak influence so if you want to get like a full group and including daybreak weapons and the daybreak mods and stuff to add to your facility these things cost so you have to continuously play over and over and over again in order to get what you want i mean it's 
it can be exhausting which is why i said that these tips before this one i feel like can help bring in people and help make it fun you know because it does need a change because constantly doing seven rounds it can get boring especially when you're doing it on the same map over and over and over again like me personally I have red talent members for each of my community right and my current community the one that you are seeing on the screen guys I have I believe three of them and I'm not gonna lie to you guys <laughs> I I gave up playing daybreak because you don't get a, a lot of influence in but this is Undead Slab's way of keeping you playing Daybreak. You want these guys, you gotta uh you you gotta play Daybreak. I'm sorry. But we do need more Daybreak. At least give us like 2,000 Daybreak influence. You don't have to give us the exact amount for a Red Talon contractor or soldier. You don't have to give us that amount, but you can at least give us like 2000 like make it worth our while bro because we play different communities and if people want red talent members in their community you're in these weapons and items i mean sure you can send somebody into the legacy pool with these items to bring over to your next community but still you're gonna have to play daybreak in order to get double like if you want the red talent workshop or lounge you're gonna have to do it twice just to have it in multiple um communities so guys let me know down in the comment section below if you guys agree with my take on changing daybreak or even changing or well, not change it but adding this to stay to the K3. I would really like to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. It's been your boy, The Real Tundra, and I will see you all next time.